Now, before you submit your levels to me for Super Mario Maker 2, I'm gonna try to make my potato level and just show you generally what it was about. But I'm gonna play a little bit of story first to jump into it. I think we're almost done with the story mode, but there are a lot of extra levels that I'd like to dig into. No, I don't plan on torturing myself with a 12-hour level. Sorry, everybody. 100 coins under the sea. Could someone indulge me by playing a course? It's simple. Collect 100 coins. I know I'm not cool. It's okay. So, people wondering, what is Vinny's potato level? I'll explain. We'll get into it a little bit. But it is not a real level, and there were no potatoes. There was just a... The, <laughs> There's a background in the NES version of Mario 3. I don't remember what exactly. I think it was... It might have been... Maybe it wasn't Mario 3 on the NES, but maybe it was All-Stars? Where you're in a cave. I think it's like one of those linking caves that the, the pipes take you to on the overworld. And it looks like potatoes on the wall. Might be All-Stars. That probably was All-Stars then, yeah. I think it was. And that thought... Oh, man. That thought came up momentarily. It was in All-Stars. I remember you talking about it when you streamed Mario 3 in All-Stars years ago. The potatoes? Really? Vinny, I'm making pasta soup. Do you want some? What do you mean, pasta soup? Like, is it pasta-flavored soup? Is that a thing? Oh, like minestrone? Yeah, the minestrone's good. Like, you put- you boil the pasta. You boil the pasta, and then you- you just take out the pasta. And then you add, like... I don't know, a carrot and a celery, and then you have pasta soup, and that's it. No seasoning, nothing else. Tortellini soup is actually good. You know, I'm kind of now getting hungry, and... and... 2.21 a.m. is not a good time to get hungry. But, um... I'm thinking about them soup, and now I'm thinking about, specifically... chicken tortilla soup, from this place I like to go to, for taco. They have... Excellent chicken tortilla soup. It's so good. That was like the one of the first meals I had after I had my episode with strep throat last year Where I was just eating as much as I could just to like live and not die But when I had the chicken tortilla soup, I was like this is amazing It was the first time I enjoyed food again because I was getting better and The soup was really good. It was a profound moment of soup. I don't get it the world's greatest cannon ride Check it, I made an airship of my dreams. Sure. Vinny, do you call pasta sauce sauce or gravy? I call it sauce, but my family called it gravy, and I did call it gravy when I was younger. Um, it's now difficult for me to go back to calling it gravy, but I did for a while. Which, there's an easy tie-in to Mario here, which is, again, you've heard me talk about it on the stream, but there's always people that are brand new, that are tuning in for the first time, or people that missed previous streams. So, if you watch the original Super Mario Bros. Super Show cartoon from the late 80s, you will see that Super Mario eats pasta with no sauce. Now, we here on the stream have determined that this, in fact, could be a nice, like, garlic sauce. Garlic and oil. It could be, like, a, an Alfredo. It could be just- just some olive oil, and- and like a little light seasoning. It's likely just pasta cooked, boiled, and nothing else. So, the very essence of an airship level. Monty moles and cannons. And sure, throw a muncher in too while you're at it, that's fine. Olive oil is- is great. Ah. Uh, olive oil's great. Someone said olive oil, probably. Olive oil... There are a lot of Italian, like, restaurants around here that give you bread with olive oil and it's just salt and pepper maybe a little bit of like oregano so salt pepper maybe a tiny bit of oregano but the olive oil is so good it's like really like imported amazingness that you you just dip the bread in there and it's it's delicious we can't be doing food talk at this time i'm sorry i usually try to avoid going into like too much detail about food but god damn I saw that one coming. It's just greed. Speaking of greed... The only thing that's needed to be the ultimate airship level in my opinion- Wow, twice! 
Wow. The only thing it needed was the, the flames. That's it. Oh, yeah. time. Almost done. Almost done. One more. What's going on? Oh man, this is bad. Big Red, we got a problem. I, uh, I just, uh... Meowser showdown. This is terrible. The chief has been abducted by Bowser. We'll never be able to complete the castle without her. Please uh, help us, Mario. Thanks in advance. Vinny, the Mario Super Brothers show. <laughs> Super Brothers. Where it's like Star Wars. There was a, a Muppet Baby Star Wars episode that I really liked growing up. And again, it was like vague Star Wars. Like when I was a kid, before I ever watched Star Wars, there was this hint, this all, you know, all-encompassing, like pervasive everything referenced Star Wars. Like, every show that I watched had Star Wars in it. Like, the Muppets... Not the Muppet Babies, but the Muppets. Mark Hamill was in that. So, like, there was always some, like, hint of Star Wars somewhere. And then when I finally saw it, I was even more a fan of the Muppet Babies episode. And anything that was Star Wars... It wasn't like today where ev you can get anything you want Star Wars at the drop of a hat. Not just the internet, but like toys and, you know, media, whatever. Like, back in my day, you had to watch the Muppet Babies at the exact right time to find the exact episode. Oof. Bowser, why don't you just, mm, keep the mushroom? Um, but yeah, I mean, Star Wars today is very different than what it was at the time. It's weird, because Star Wars today is hated because it's too popular. But, in like, 1995 or 6, when I got into it, it was- people hated me because it was Star Wars and I was a nerd. So there's like no middle ground with Star Wars. Because it wasn't as popular, it was more- it was like known, it was a culturally relevant thing and people knew about it, but it wasn't something that was on the, the tips of everyone's tongue. It was just that Lucas had re-released the trilogy on VHS, and I remember just thinking like, Oh my god, everyone needs to see this, it's amazing. And then, people were like, You're a nerd! Star Wars is stupid. You watch stupid stuff from the 70s that's nerd stuff? Like, that, that sort of thing. And now, like, you go to a convention, and it's just like... Uh. So that's- that's what happened. It got really weird. It turned into... That was before the prequels, too. So it started as... One thing where people would dislike you, and now it's another thing where people dislike you. But it's much, much more accept accepted to be into nerd shit now. Everyone is kind of a nerd. It's like the cultural zeitgeist. It, it finally hit, you know, critical- critical mass and all that. I was also gonna say this about the band Nirvana. I had some thoughts about Nirvana that I'd like to share while I'm failing at this level. Which is, I've been listening to this podcast called The Heart Shaped Pod, where these two guys do 33 episodes on everything. We're talking like, you know, Kurt's life, to the bootleg songs, to the most... Uh, the best obscure Nirvana songs, to the conspiracies, to the recording of Nevermind, Bleach, and Utero. Everything. And it brought me back to this world that I was in, because that was an obsession of mine for years. And I tried to not really talk about them because I'm kind of sick of listening to them. Because it's like just so elemental, it's so elementary. You know, it's just, oh fuck. N Nirvana's a band that it was hard to escape. Do you remember Doom Clones? How everything was a Doom Clone? Well, there was also in the 90s at the time Nirvana Clones. And... I listened to almost nothing but Nirvana for a couple years because I just liked... I don't know why, I couldn't really tell you. I just liked their music so much. I was just... I guess I was edgy at 12? 11 and 12? I don't really understand it. My cousin explains it as... He brought over Unplugged from New York while we were in the pool for many, many weeks. And one day I just started asking him questions about Kurt Cobain. I was like, who is this guy? What does he look like? And, um... Then I just got obsessed and I got some cassette tapes from, um a boardwalk in uh, Point Pleasant, New Jersey. The first tapes I ever owned were Bleach and Incesticide. So, those are my first two albums. By the way, not the most accessible Nirvana albums. Two of the weirdest fucking albums ever to have your first albums that you own. Really, really, really... like... 
loud, fucked up concepts. Like, the, the lyrics were really dark. Incesticide is a, a really fucking strange album. But then it was just years, you know, and I collected everything I could and I got bootlegs. I tried to find and research everything I could. I tried to read about the band. It was just, it was an obsession. And then the conspiracy of whether or not it was murdered, you know, all this stuff. And um, I couldn't help it. When I first started playing music, it was too much Nirvana. But I've come to embrace the fact that that's just... Whoa. That's just a part of my musical DNA. That's just a part of who I am as a person at this point, for better or worse. And this podcast has really made me love them again in a, in a weird way. I still don't want to listen to them necessarily because I know all of it. I'm kind of sick of it. But I really appreciate those songs. Um, and it's not as dark. It really is not as dark. There's a song called Do Re Mi. It was released on an, um, as an outtake. Not an outtake, as a demo. It was never finished. It was like a 1994 song. It's like Kurt Cobain's last song. And you go onto the, the YouTube channel, and everyone's like, it's so dark. It's so dark. And it's like, he knew he was gonna die. It's so dark. And, um... It's so sad, and it's, it's so, like, bittersweet, and it's like, well, the song is kind of beautiful, and it's really, like, it's in a major key, mostly, and to me it sounded like a new direction, like, the dude was gonna quit the band. That band would not have lasted much longer. And to my ears, that song sounds like Kurt trying to sing. He's not screaming, he's just playing the song, and it's a really nice-sounding song. It's actually probably the best post-death release that there is. For Nirvana, and, and it's like it's just acoustic, and the recording quality is shitty. But people reframe it in the context of, "Oh, Kurt did this," so the song is him like saying goodbye. And the worst part is, and I'm sorry, I'm going on a tangent here, but please allow me this for a moment. The worst part for me, and I understand the need to do this, but the video on YouTube says "Do Re Mi" plus lyrics. The lyrics are total gibberish. The lyrics are Kurt just making up words on the spot to find the melodies. Okay, they- he's just, like, saying, like, nonsense. And, like, you hear, like, just half words and, like, not real words. And the interpretations of the lyrics are all like, I have a gun, I'm going to die. You know what I mean? Like, it's- it's really, like, in the context of what happened, is what they interpreted the lyrics as. Um, and there are some sentences that are just totally not, like, right, and they sound wrong, and I guess it's- it's- the desire to do that is understandable, but that video should definitely have a disclaimer. Um, it should mo I mean, I get what happened to him was dark, he wrote some dark songs, but there was a- that band was really funny. Like, if Kurt- that didn't happen to him, they would be remembered in a different way, for sure. And they were- it's like a lot of, like, humor. Um... But yeah, the video has lots of views. It's called Do Re Mi. Um, check it out and see for yourself and tell me if you hear him saying those words. Because I don't think that... It, there should be a disclaimer on the video saying this is my interpretation of what these lyrics are. In my opinion. So, I'm sorry to, again, tangent. Really big tangent. But it's something I, I noticed the other day. Um, and I think, again... Just to finish up what I was saying, it, I know it's no longer- see, it's the Star Wars thing, it's no longer cool to like Nirvana because they're so damn big. And because of what happened in post, and also because their music has the Seinfeld effect of like every band tried to do what they did, and some very unsuccessfully, and some pretty successfully. Um, and maybe you just don't like Kurt, maybe you don't like his voice, the songs, that's fine. But that's, that's, you know, personal taste. But, um... Yeah, I think it's it's important to to realize like the dude wasn't that dark at all times. And people that knew him said he had a good sense of humor. And this song Do Re Mi, to my ears, sounds like something that they would have done as a new thing. Like he was trying to get away from that grunge, that like heavy shit. I think he was trying to do something new. And maybe this was it. And he was trying to use his falsetto more. Who knows, maybe if you finish the lyrics, it wouldn't have been so damn depressing. If only you had the chance. 
Sorry. Okay, back to the game. <laughs> How did this happen? Fresh air, finally. I owe you one, Mario. And with that, the stained glass is finished. I think we're finally done. The most expensive piece of the castle, the stained glass. And it's finally, finally complete. There's a comment on that video that I would love to read that I showed uh, the Sphinx and a couple people that's hilarious. I'm going to read the comment to you in a minute. Um, oh, what a beautiful castle it is. My name could go down in history for this, but now's not the time for that. Let's go get Princess Peach. Oh my, what a lovely castle. You must have all worked so hard on this. Thank you so much, Mario. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just a kiss on the cheek. Undo dog, you uh, undo dog, you rapscallion. Okay. Well, this obviously the story mode in this was was uh, it, it kind of like a way to just give you some inspiration for your levels. But I thought the levels were really good and just a you know a little cohesive thing where everything's tied together with the castle building. It's great. It, it really it did what it had to do. I some people complained it was too long and there were too many levels. No. I mean, there's still more I haven't done, but you can get to the end of this without having to do all the levels. And it was a really good story mode. Um, it needed this. Mario Maker definitely needed this, because I know there's people that say, when I tell them I like Mario Maker and they have a Switch, they're like, yeah, but I don't want to make levels. Or, they say, but are the levels people make good? Is it going to be worth my money? But... Now, you can say there's a story mode. It's got like a hundred levels. And you can play the online levels, you can do verses, there's a lot of stuff. But this was the icing on the cake. Perfect sequel. But, um, of course, the, you, know, well, the, you know, the online is chunky and needs some fixing, if, if there's such a thing can happen. Someone emailed me and explained what the netcode in this game was, and it's... It, you know, it makes sense. I forgot exactly- I don't know how to explain it, you know, but when I read it, I was like, okay, that makes sense. But it's- it's a money-saving move. Okay, so I want to read this thing real quick. Um, I thought this was a very naive, very sweet comment, and I'm not making fun of this person because I think it's actually kind of heartening in some ways to read this. Or it's an elaborate troll. Someone wrote, um, Kurt didn't believe in heaven, have hope he reincarnated like he wanted. Okay, so these these comments are weird to begin with. And then someone in the comments for this Do Re Mi Nirvana video wrote, Actually, reincarnation likely isn't real, considering that old spirits from far in the past are still around today in old haunted places. I watched a psychic reading of Kurt Cobain that is probably 100% true from 2011, where the psychic said that Cobain and Love would release a book near the 20th anniversary of his death. She did in 2013, and released new songs. Happened with Montage of Heck, the home recordings, in 2014. I doubt he'd want to reincarnate at this point because he's focusing on watching his daughter from the other side and being proud of her and stuff. Kurt said that he would have wanted to reincarnate before he died. He didn't know yet that the other side was better than this one, where you can see the future and see close ones continue on without you. I'd rather not Kurt reincarnate now, because how would we know it's him? It's not that easy to make a successful Nirvana-like band today, so it's rather pointless, because you won't be popular or own the rights to your music from the... 
Okay, hang on a minute. Rewind. Pay close attention to this part. Because you won't be popular or own the rights to your music from your past life if reincarnation is possible. Good timing on the music. This is a real YouTube comment. I think this, this has got to be a troll. I doubt it is, as heaven is where the spirits go for eternal life, internal, and en- enteral life, which is better than living on earth for sure. So remember, 100% true from 2011 reading that they would release new songs in a book, and you wouldn't own the rights to your music from your past life if reincarnation is possible. I read this last night, and let's just say I was a little loopy to begin with, and it was real late, and I'm like, what? So, but, but I couldn't, like, you know, maybe they're young and naive, and I can't, like, I can't really be upset. Like, maybe they're just trying their best. Or it's just YouTube comments. That's fine. Congratulations on completing Peach's Castle. and Super Mario Maker 2, you can make all kinds of courses like the one you played in story mode. Well, that was a very good yeah. story mode. Vinny, that Nirvana song reminds me of a song called Prince Coronat Skusel. Have you heard of it? I have. It's the fake song that Italians made in English, quote-unquote, that sounds like English words, but actually isn't English. Someone said, spend your money. Where do you spend money in this game? Vinny, there's a whole NPC you haven't talked to. Oh, Toadette, you can spend your money. The underground is filled with blocks and no one can get through, but I'm sure you could clear the way with a super hammer. Okay. I've only done super hammer stuff, like, maybe once or twice. Whee! Man, that one lock camera function, I always go on and on and on about it, but what a fucking good thing to add to this game. Such a simple thing to do, and it, yet it made so much difference. Man, I never thought, like, has Ma- Mario had a melee move before, aside from, like, um, the cape? Or the raccoon tail? Oh, the cat. The cat. Mario RPG. Mario 64. Well, how about 2D Mario? Aside from the spins. Oh, the frog. Yeah, oh, he's had plenty of melee. Not like a weapon, like a sword or anything like that. But he's got he's got plenty of melee moves. I like that when you swing the hammer, you actually... Okay. Whoa. You, you, you can, like, jump through a wall with it because Mario moves forward a bit. Why are you doing that, mate? Ha 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 ha! Wow, that's good stuff. Someone with Vine Sauce Emerald account just said, "Is this streamer always like this?" Remember, that's a two-year subscriber. Or more. I like that comment. 